Today, we are going to study how a firm makes its output and input decisions to maximize profits. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do the following things. First, you should be able to explain the difference between accounting profit and economic profit. Second, you should be able to set up and solve a firm's profit maximization problem. Third, you should be able to derive a firm's factor demand curves. Fourth, you should be able to predict the effects of changes in input and output prices on a firm's optimal level of output and optimal input choices. And finally, you should be able to explain whether the predicted effects of price changes on a firm's output and input choices make sense. In general, a firm's profits are the difference between what it makes or its revenue and what it spends or its costs. In economics, we distinguish between two types of profits, accounting profits, and economic profits. You may have learned about these different types of profits in your introductory economics course. Accounting profits include all the costs that you would find in a firm's profit and loss statement. Generally speaking, if a firm had to make a cash outlay or write a check to cover some expense, it is deducted from accounting profits. All of these costs are valued at the price that the firm actually paid for the item. A general formula for a firm's accounting profits is its revenues minus its accounting costs. To calculate a firm's economic profits, we must account for additional costs, which we term economic costs. Examples of economic costs include the amount the owner of a business could earn if he or she chose to work for someone else instead of owning a business, or the amount a farmer could obtain for their land. In general, a firm's economic costs are its opportunity costs, or the value of the next best alternative use of each of its inputs. Because these costs reflect the current best alternative use of these resources, we value them at the current market price. To calculate economic profits, find the firm's accounting profits and then subtract its economic costs. We will start off analyzing firm behavior in perfectly competitive markets. In a perfectly competitive market, no firm is big enough to have an effect on either the prices of the goods that it buys or the prices of the goods that it sells. Thus, firms take all prices as given. As noted earlier, a firm's profit equals its revenues minus its costs. A firm's revenue equals the amount of output that it produces multiplied by the price for which it can sell each unit of output. We will let the letter P represent the price for which the firm can sell each unit of output. Similarly, a firm's costs are the quantity of each input that a firm uses multiplied by the price per unit of each input. We will let the letter W with a subscript represent the cost of each input. For example, if a firm uses two inputs, W1 represents the cost of input 1 and W2 represents the cost of input 2. If we start with a simple model in which a firm produces one output and uses two inputs, then mathematically, a firm's revenues are the price of its output times the quantity of output it produces, which is measured by the production function. The firm's costs will be the sum of the price of each input multiplied by the quantity of input the firm uses, and profits will be the difference between these two expressions. We will start by examining the firm's short-run profit maximization problem. Recall that in the short run, at least one input is fixed. We will denote the fixed input by placing a bar over it in the profit equation. For example, x2 with a bar over it indicates that input 2 is the fixed input. Thus, the firm's short-run maximization problem is to choose the amount of x1 to use to maximize profits. By now, you should know that to find the amount of x1 that maximizes profits, we should take the first derivative of the profit equation with respect to x1, set it equal to 0, and solve for x1. When we do this, we find that the optimal level of x1, the price of output times the derivative of the production function with respect to x1, will equal to the cost of the input. 
you should recognize the derivative of the production function with respect to x1 as the marginal product of x1. Furthermore, you should notice that the price of output multiplied by the marginal product of x1 is simply the additional benefit the firm gets from using an additional unit of x1. If the firm uses an additional unit of x1, the benefit of doing this is the additional output it can produce from x1 multiplied by the price for which it can sell the output. Similarly, the additional cost of an additional unit of x1 is simply the price that the firm has to pay for this unit. Thus, the firm will continue to use input 1 until the additional benefit just equals the additional cost. You should recognize that the firm's profit maximizing input level is simply an application of the marginal benefit marginal cost rule that you learned in introductory economics. It may help to see this profit maximization pro rule illustrated graphically. In both graphs, we will put units of x1 on the horizontal axis. In the top graph, we will graph both revenues and costs. Revenues are simply price times output as measured by the production function. Thus, the shape of the revenue graph will be the same as a graph of the production function, since multiplying this function by a constant will not change its general shape. Costs are simply W1 multiplied by X1, which will be a straight line from the origin with a slope of W1. In the bottom graph, we will put profits on the vertical axis. Since profits are the difference between revenues and costs, profits are the vertical distance between the green revenue curve and the red cost line in the top graph. Note that at the point where this distance is greatest, and thus profits are maximized, the slope of the profit curve and the slope of the cost line are the same. The slope of the profit curve is the price times the marginal product of x1. Thus, at the optimal level of x1, the value of the marginal product of x1 will be equal to its cost. In the long run, all inputs are variable. This problem has two choice variables, x1 and x2. To solve a maximization problem with multiple choice variables, first, take the partial derivative of the function with respect to each variable, then set each partial derivative equal to zero and solve. If we apply these steps, first, we take the partial derivatives. Then, we set each partial derivative equal to zero and solve. Note that the equations describing the optimal amount of each input look very similar to the short run case. At the optimal level of each input, the value of the marginal product will equal the input price. Let's work through an example. Consider a firm with the Cobb-Douglas production function f equals x1 to the one-third times x2 to the one-third. To find the profit function, multiply the production function by the price of output to get revenues, and then subtract the price of each input multiplied by the quantity of each input, which are the firm's costs. To find the values of x1 and x2 that maximize this firm's profits, take the partial derivative of the profit equation with respect to x1 and x2, set equal to zero, and solve. Since you have two equations and two unknowns, you can solve for either variable in either equation and then substitute into the other to solve. I will use the first equation to solve for x2 to the two-thirds, and then substitute this expression into the second equation. If we substitute and simplify, we find that x1 equals the price of output cubed divided by 27 times the cost of input 1 squared times the cost of input 2. We can now substitute this expression for x1 back into the solution for x2. When we do this and simplify, 
we find that the solution for the optimal amount of x2 is analogous to the solution for x1. These solutions to the profit maximization problem are called the factor demand functions. They describe how much of each input the firm will use as a function of the input and output prices. Now that we have these solutions, we can apply the sanity check to see if the answers make sense. There are three things to check. How the optimal quantity for each input changes when the price of output changes. How the optimal quantity of each input changes when the price of that input changes. And how the optimal quantity for one input changes when the price of the other input changes. When the price of output increases, the firm uses more of both inputs. This should make sense, since when the price of output increases, the firm can increase its profits by producing more output, which will require more inputs. Therefore, this result passes the sanity check. When the price of input 1 increases, the firm uses less of input 1. This result makes sense because, when a, firm, because a firm should use less of an input when it becomes relatively more expensive. We find the same result for the relationship between the price of input 2 and the amount of input 2 that the firm uses. Finally, when the price of one input increases, the firm uses less of the other input as well. Although this result may be less intuitive, when the cost of an input increases, the firm will require less of both inputs if it decreases output in response to the increase in input costs. So, this result can make sense as well. This concludes this lesson on profit maximization. You will have more chances in class to set up, solve, and interpret profit maximization problems.